and uh, welcome all the participants uh, for our webinar in anti money laundering aml and that is one of the most hot topic uh, throughout the globe right okay this is sham and i represent a, Del a company called delphi education we are a ua based company as well as we have uh, offices and we have a company in india also in the various parts of the india and we are a specialist in financial audit accounting and your compliance related courses that's our specialty okay and today we're talking about anti money laundering uh, webinar and how it could enhance the career of uh, working professional why they need it the people who are working in auditing or compliance field banking investment banking exchange houses how it can help them and what are the diff different requirements for the same for that our expert mr sharma will explain you okay in a short and also he will uh, explain that uh, we get a lot of inquiries and we are one of the uh, provider for camp courses okay he will also explain you about the camp course the eligibility for the same the benefit for the course what are the course contained how much time it will take to do the course so welcome mr sharma uh, you can start the session sir thank you uh, thank you thank you mr sham thanks for thanks for the introduction <laughs> and uh, so uh, I can see the participants are already here, so I think we can start now, right? Yes, yes, yes. And it would be a bit of a short course, like a, it's a very basic course related to anti-money laundering and all. And um, I'll go through the all the related and the, you know that uh, whatever the the, the basic uh, knowledge a person should have before they can jump into the this case, the, this field. And uh, beside this, also as uh, as we all know, the the world, the whole world, and anyway, everywhere. The, the laundering of money that illegally transfer uh, the funds is it's been a challenge uh, it's, it's since a long time and every country or, or every jurisdiction they are just keep on strengthening their uh, the rules and regulation and everything so that they can uh, fight the, uh, fight this uh, this evil so let's let's start with this session the first of all the we will start with the you know the basic definition of money laundering what is the definition of money and money laundering that we'll start with so the money laundering money laundering defined in a, in a very in a various uh, you know the, or, or the government body or non government body or who or whenever the the, the big uh, organizations are there like fatf and the uh, central bank of the of the country or or everyone has their own different uh, i mean a different definition of this so money laundering basically uh, if i if i uh, can explain you in a layman layman term that the person some people or or an individual maybe a group of people or an individual acquiring some money by some illegal activities basically it's known as a organized crime the whole chunk of money laundering happens to the organized crime only the the criminals they they organize in a different way and they earn a very uh, a huge profit of it and now this money they cannot show to the government that they has earned this money they need a procedure and the whole system to clean this money and look it clean it uh, its origin is clean suppose the money laundering as defined here is money laundering defined as any financial or banking transaction aimed at concealing or changing the source of its illegally obtained funds by passing through the financial and the banking system in order to make it appear as originating from a legitimate source and then repumping and investing illegally and sometime i would i would just add here that uh, all the time after the integration after when they has acquired the fund and when they're using the fund sometime they are using it legally as well for there they can start a legal business out of it so uh, so this is the thing this is uh, been uh, this particular definition has been adopted by the ua ministry of economics so now how this money laundering thing happen as it's a, it's a you can understand the uh, this is a very big thing i will just tell you the amount of money is laundered throughout the year and throughout any in the world it's almost like an economy of india so almost 3 trillion of us dollar laundered through various channels every year only in uh, the data we whatever the data we have that suggested that is increasing day by day so how it's happening there if there is no such uh, you know this uh, pro the proper structure 
then it cannot be happen and this this big money cannot move out or move from the criminal source and and come into the legitimate uh, legitimate economy so what is the pro- procedure of it so there is three session we can say that three, three stages are there of money laundering is a well known thing and uh, the first known uh, first uh, uh, first stage we known as uh, placement and the second is layering and third is integration so what does mean by what does it mean by the placement placement means simply the person when they have the cash chunk of cash they are putting the money into the financial system they can structure the money structuring means they they can divide the money into various smaller uh, smaller deposit and then can de- uh, then they can deposit it or they can simply smuggle the currency the currency notes of that particular country to some other place and then there they can introduce into the financial system and then blending funds what does blending fund mean suppose i have a business and i have in another hand i have a, i have a legitimate business of a restaurant and i have a another hand i ha- i am i am dealing with drugs so the money from the legitimate business and drugs i will just uh, blend together and then i will be putting into the system then another thing is f- false invoicing suppose i did not make any sell on that particular day from my restaurant i just put us uh, put us i uh, put a simple sale of maybe on 1 million dollar in a month and i'm showing that this is an extra extra money i got some order from outside and i'm making making a false invoice and then i'm depositing it to the financial system or, or any bank the bank i'm uh, holding the account with so now the the part and then the layering what does layering means layering means simply they the the people who is who is involved in this money laundering they are layering this this money and they are doing multiple transactions so the layer upon layer of the tra- the transaction is happening money the 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 person a is sending to b then b is sending to c and the c is sending to a again and like this happening every time and after at least 20 to 30 transaction then the the one person is receiving the fund at the end so what, what happened why they do layering after this multiple series of transaction the uh, exact the source of the fund that where it has been deposited at the at the first normally the bank bank person like we we sitting in the bank they will not be able to understand they many a time they they fail to understand so they le- they think that this is the legitimate transactions coming to me and we just we just pass those transaction then the last part we call is integration so integration how the integration can happen integration can happen in the you know uh, after the whenever the, the the fund is available for the criminal they can integrate it in a legitimate business or some luxury luxury goods and or invest and into the security markets or buying some luxury properties so we have to understand one thing like why these people are doing money laundering what is the motive behind it so motive behind the money laundering is only to uh, to enjoy a, a, a wonderful life which is then unable to do in the in the normal way so this is the thing they are doing it they are buying uh, costly yachts and they are bu- they are buying the uh, i mean costly cars the jewelry is and all so this is the final stage is known as the integration sometime it possible that layering stage is not there they have already deposited the fund into the bank account and they are directly integrating they are buying a real estate with the same money they are not you know uh, making m- multiple transactions it can pos- it it can happen and sometime it is also possible that they are just se- the whole amount of the the whole the earned money from the illegal business they are directly purchasing this effect they, that, that they are directly integrating the fund and now this is depends upon the jurisdiction to jurisdiction now in ue suppose in ue market or in indian market if the person is coming with a full bag of dollars or the indian rupees or ue dirhams the bank or the real estate agent even they will ask question the where they do get the money from so it's not true for every country or every jurisdiction it depends upon the which jurisdiction we are talking about now so this is the visualization you can have from this particular picture that how the money laundering happens first 
this uh, criminal organization they collect the fund they collect the fund after you know the selling whatever drugs or arms or or maybe there is some extortion business uh, after they're kidnapping people and extort extorting money and then they have the fund now now they will move this dirty money and into uh, into the financial system so it can happen in a multiple uh, transaction or or it can happen in one transaction that depends upon the volume of the money and the rules of the country suppose in, if we see look at the us market there is a rule if it's more than 10000 they have to do the doc, the uh, the bank or the financial institution report it to the irs so they don't don't do it we have seen uh, whenever we are studying the case studies we can see the people are depositing 9999 dollars to just to hide that the fact that uh, the if they knows already that if the, if i deposit the 10000 together then the bank will report to the irs so this is the the process that is known as structuring also so and by structuring or can in the bulk deposit the people deposit the fund into the financial system now the layering how the layer can happen the 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 fund which is already available in one bank account it can be transferred to the another another bank account and to given some loan to another another company another you know it normally these companies are offshore companies which is the, which does exist only in the paper and then when this uh, this false company again repay the fund to that particular owner it looks that they have given the, uh, there is a loan loan repayment happening so that time it can be considered as an uh, integration and they can directly buy an a factory or maybe a real estate or they can enjoy their life as they want so this is the three parts and you can just see see how it happens so let's see what what is the you know effect of the money laundering on the on our economy or the system or the society is money laundering has a, is an evil and it has a very bad effect in our society first of all if your system your, your country is in a situation where the money laundering is happening then the basic economy which is the legal economy that would be affected highly because a person who is running a business from a legitimate source and legitimate fund he need to earn money he need to earn profits in on the other hand if one one money launderer or a criminal has opened a business he don't need to make profit he can bear some loss as well and suppose one particular good is supposed to sold in 1000 uh, in 1000 bucks they can sell they can sell it to the 900 so the real real economy the legit economy is got affected by this and beside this in any economy if this money laundering is there then uh, this criminal activity increase all the time because they are they can they can do whatever uh, they can uh, reuse the money to do the criminal activities so this is the basic social effect we have and uh, as we know that if we, if this money is moving um, like this then the country is going to miss their tax as well so it can be you know the country's developments and all is 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 getting highly affected we can see there is a lot of jurisdiction in the world where this uh, the, because of this criminal activity because of this uh, money laundering thing people don't invest in those markets the foreign investment never comes in the, those markets only the criminal um, criminals money comes and get get flushed and th- then get reinvested again in the system so now what is the uae market what is the in uae authorities identify as a threat as we are in in uh, we are in the us based company and we were in uae uae so this is the uae government has identified this 21 predicate crimes and what does predicate crimes means the crime which has been identified by the government and the where this money coming to get cleaned so main source of this fund is happening uh, in new way you can see this the high under the high category this is the main uh, criminal activity happening here first of all counter uh, you know uh, the the fraud happening the counterfeit products are there then illicit traffic of narcotics drugs and psychotropic substances mean the drugs drugs business and third is coming um, professional part uh, professional third party money laundering 
so we have to understand the last last uh, thing that people are here who is just has opened their business or the individual is showing themselves as a um, as a employee just to do the money laundering so as you are having you know the very good banking system and you know updated banking system and then uh, the, we have a lot of free zones here so this uh, professional money launderers can have you know can easily hide their identity and they can show that they have a business in free zone and they are just earning a huge huge amount of money and then they are just they are just working for the criminals it can happen and the, what is the medium that we have market manipulation robbery theft illicit trafficking of stolen and other goods but as we know that in ue market is uh, the law is very strict so this uh, medium and uh, medium high activities are less but main thing which is happening here that is the fraud counterfeiting and uh, counterfeit uh, products and the professional third party money laundering and this medium and low exist in the market but in a very low scale so after this money laundering one more uh, part of the uh, financial crime we can understand as a terrorist financing now what is terrorist financing terrorist financing is the financing of terrorist acts and the terrorist uh, and the terrorist uh, financing the terrorist act and terrorist or the terrorist organization now if we and we, whenever we heard that word that finan- terrorist financing we feel that person we are just uh, sending money to maybe buy uh, to buy bomb or maybe buy guns to you know, to perform the terrorist activity but this is not always true when the terrorist financing we think about the terrorist has to go before to uh, to to uh, to do the terrorist activity they they has to go they has to stay they has to understand the situation so every part of this like since, uh, since the uh, from the time this training of the terrorist going on then their accommodation their food everything includes the money laundering the things uh, which is related to money laundering so now how does it happen mainly people raise the fund okay it's a lot of people raise the fund for different reason may uh, we can have understanding that people in a te- with the country where the, the, the lot of terrorist active uh, terrorist active terrorists are there they engage the whole world and uh, earn the their and the charity they re- request everyone to to donate now this donation some part they use for the real reason they show that they have maybe a hospital maybe a you know ambulance service and uh, various various uh, activity they show so they use a part of it into those those things and the major portion of those donation goes to the terrorist financing now how it is happening terrorist financing they first recruit the terrorist then they train them and then they send the terrorist to a particular country or particular area to stay observe understand and blend into the society and then the the ammunition or weapon or whatever it is would be reaching to them and then they would be uh they would be give, just you no know, they will act the terrorist terrorist activity so now you can understand that today is a day when in uh, 2008 we have seen uh, there was a major terrorist attack in india and in the same uh, in the same way they have came from the outside and they have collected their weapons and they have uh, act, they have done the act so in the same way uh, the terrorist finance happen all the time so now what is our challenge as a bank or as a financial institution rather first they will raise the fund so our we can see our there is a four options is uh, the four uh, Uh, stage is there of the terrorist financing raise then store then move and then use so beside the last option that is use all these three part and bank or a financial institute can be a part of suppose how the raise raise uh, when someone is raising as a donation money i'm uh, raising as a donation 
so uh, how we can be uh, how we can uh, be a part of it our institution can be used to send money to that particular person or organization then storing that particular organization or individual who is collecting funds for this charity activity they are storing the fund in bank then moving this move this charity organization normally work you know the uh the market in the marketing business uh, there is a uh, procedure that when we engage a lot of uh, multi layer business multi layer marketings so first some people will collect and give it to one person then those fund will be again collected and giving to the another person and then it will go to the final destination in the same way so they has to raise the fund their banking and financial institution can come then they has to store the fund there also it comes and they has to move the funds so all these three stages money loan um, the banks or the financial uh, institution can be used so as a professional in the terrorist financing and anti money laundering rather we can say the anti financial crime expert what is our duty our duty to understand what is happening in our institute we don't have to look you know what is uh, we don't have to keep it in mind that this person we have to uh, send it to the police or something we have to do our job we have to understand if the person is raising money for someone else or not if the person who is sending money from uh, from his pocket to another person does these two people know each other or not do our customer our customer is sending uh, sending to the beneficiary do they have a real reason to sending this money or not so these things we need to take care of and when they're storing the fund in a, as an bank um, or an financial institution they can they have to understand that the person uh, suppose a person b is, uh, is storing the money and he is receiving the fund from multiple people so after uh, in the previously someone has received the multiple uh, deposit in their account and they're storing in some other account so why he is storing this particular fund here maybe he is a, uh, he is a national of another country and he has opened an account here and he is storing the fund here and now the final stage is moving they they are where they are sending money and who is the final uh, final beneficiary of this fund so this do we have to understand so whenever uh, we we study the Uh, money law la- money laundering and terrorist financing there are uh, first question arise in our mind what is the difference between these two what is terrorist financing and what is uh, what is difference between terrorist financing and the anti money uh, and the money laundering see the terrorist and uh, money laundering as we already told us the source of the fund will always be an illegal okay that can comes from any kind of uh whatever we have seen this uh, fraudulent activity or or any kind of criminal activity the money will always be illegal at the origin but interestingly in this terrorist financing sometime people can give the money to this terrorist organization or or as a donation to someone who is into uh, to the individual from their own pocket their hard earned money even if a person who is earning very little amount of salary from the just to donate someone just to from the helping nature of human being they are donating someone just for that that they are they are just sending money to someone so raising money raising fund and the placement we can see that raising uh, the raising fund and the placement can be you know that there's a, there is a difference between the money laundering and terrorist financing and in terrorist financing the beneficiary will always be somehow hidden or un- unrelated to our customer by in the other hand the beneficiary of the money laundering will always be the same person or from the related party like who is sending the money and who is receiving at the integration stage those people will be same so this use of the fund which is coming at the end that is giving a terrorist uh, they are they are doing some terrorist activity this is a difference then the origin of the money which is the collecting money uh, how they are collecting money from there is a difference and 
the another another difference is <coughs> when they <coughs> okay so when they are just uh, sending the money to the the related pa- the party who is the beneficiary and is not always related in case of terrorist financing but in the uh, in the money laundering it will always be related so this is the three basic difference between terrorist financing and money laundering and money laundering also when we whenever we study the money laundering we see the uh, the transaction from a money launderer its volume is a bit high is huge money normally deposited into the different maybe structured or maybe in a single go but in terrorist financing can happen from the $50 also now there is an interesting term is going on nowadays like the everyone is talking about it that is prolification financing so what is the prolification financing now prolification financing the just just can read it just while there is no <coughs> intricately agreed definition of the prolification financing yet because it's a new term it can be described as the providing financial service for the transfer and the export of nuclear chemical and the biological weapon this weapons known as the weapons of mass destruction so related to this uh, whenever any country is doing some new research on the nuclear uh, to build a nuclear weapon or maybe they are raising fund for uh, to build their nuclear weapon or obstruct um, they obscuring the fund like they are uh, they're getting the fund from outside and they want to uh, send it to someone else some some particular uh, supplier and then they ship this products to that particular country where this uh, researches and uh, um, the nu- nuclear weapon or this uh, the chemicals open they're building so this three is now our ours uh, this is the new things which has been added this is not not very new also but it is is relatively new to the uh, to this industry if you compare with the uh, terrorist financing and money laundering so the financial elements of weapon of mass destruction that is wmd known as the the elements of a wmd program can be divided into the three stages also raise up secure and and uh, procure and ship the people normally it happens the one in one country the money is generating or the money is generating from the same country suppose uh, we have uh, recently you know gone through a case study where the some people working the some people of uh, north korea working in different uh, country a uh, different country as a labor or as a different uh, professionals they are they are there they are receiving some funds in in some you know hidden channels uh, through through hawala to illegal uh, to illegal transfer and they are also depositing their own salaries and one own earnings so these people who is who is in an, in a different location they are collecting those funds they are uh, they are making the false company and they are they are sending to a third com- a third country from where they will buy those material which is required to build this weapons and then those material they can procure and ship to that particular country so this is the procedure of prolification financing now again as the same uh, as the previous say, whatever i have said i have shown you in the terrorist financing the raise of secure and the uh, the procure and shipping in this one every stage is involved the banking the raising also and when they are sending to any other country also and procurement proce- procedure also that when suppose an illegal company has been formed to gather maybe the simple wire and and the switches and they can uh, they can uh, procure those things and they will be shipping so every stage the bank or financial institution is supposed to be involved because the money need to be moved from point a to point b to point c back and then again this particular goods will be moving to the point a okay now the what the world world is doing what the un is doing for this so there is many organizations who is dealing with this uh, with with all these three or or all the or overall the financial crime 
so what are the organization known as first of all the un they has their own body called un odc uh, the full the full form can be said as united nation office of drugs and crimes why this drugs and crimes is so the, they're talking about money laundering terrorist financing but the name of the office is drugs and crime because long back it started as uh, as they they were just dealing with the crime related to drugs and then there they, there is FATF there is European Union there is OFEC and UK and uh, UK is a UK they are also uh, mandatory something that's uh, if you are moving money to UK or if you are moving money relate the country related to uh, United Kingdom that time you have to follow certain rules and this uh, FATF FATF is a governing body right now who is closely linked with the UNODC the UNODC has uh, even ODC doing all this R&D for this how this money laundering happening how the typologies are going on nowadays they are collecting all the data and they are providing a support to FATF the person who is uh, working in UAE they knows that there is a system called GoML there okay so where they are uh, where they where we report if we ha- we think that there is there can be a money laundering or something is happening we can report it and they have a system here called goml in that goml system is is prepared by unodc itself so now the unodc has given this system to every country and they are uh, uh, fitting the uh, fitting the data for wherever they are feeling any suspicious and then this all data been used so they can understand the trend and they can Uh, start the uh, start you know this new whatever the uh, is required uh, me- measure they they can take and fatf what is fatf fatf is financial action task force so financial action task force is uh, is a is a uh, international organizations which there is a lot of uh, countries that are involved in that and uh, some the, there is a few member a few countries which is the uh, governing body and there are some uh, members are there and other peop- other countries which is not a direct member of this they are member by the branches of the FATF every uh, every jurisdiction they have their own branches of FATF so in uh, in that way they are related to <coughs> now now the sanctions this sanction what does sanction mean sanctions are punitive or the uh, punitive or restrictive action taken by individual countries regimes or <clears throat> or coalition with the primary purpose to provoking the changes in the behavior or the policies so what is sanction when the when we say that the sanction is there and there is us sanction on maybe sudan or or maybe congo what does it mean that us has us government don't want the fund from congo or from from the basic and uh, particular business of the congo to move into the us or to get any kind of link with any transaction which uh, which which us is involved in so these things are there then this uh, who do the sanction things now again we'll go back to the main this this body is the even odc and fatf they they don't do sanctions european union they provides they uh, they they issue sanctions then ofac does and then uk do and even even does it so, but from the different office called even uh, united nation security council so this is the body who issue the sanction for for different reason right now after this uh, ukraine and uh, russia the war has started European Union and US US has has uh, started lot of sanctions I mean, they have issued a lot of sanctions against the Russia and uh, since a long time uh, Iran then uh, North Korea uh, if we see country like uh, Myanmar they are under sanction also for various reasons now the sanction uh, what the sanction do the sanction they stick the trade financial transaction diplomatic relation and the movement and the movement can be the individual movement or the or the movement of the army or simply can be the movement of the fund 
they can be specific or general in their implementation so what does it specific means that suppose uh, the fund which is available in the country a and is generating from the mining that will not be entertained in the financial market but if the country if the person is uh, if that particular country is earning from the i'm sorry if the country is earning the money from the agriculture it's okay it's okay they can they can uh, use that uh, this money to fund their next projects and all they can send the money to abroad or something sanctions are also referred to as a restrictive measures whenever there the as there is a sanctions on russia now they are unable to sell their resources to other countries so the so what is happening that now the russians business is getting affected there they they why they wanted they wanted the the world body wants those country to stop their activity whatever they're doing whatever the if the they want the uh, the north korea to stop the nuclear research and they are, they want to stop the russia they want russia to stop their invasion to ukraine so this for this kind of reasons this world body they put sanctions upon now what is what is the type of several type of sanctions we have the first of all we can say the economic sanction we have we have the diplomatic sanction military sanction sanctions and the sports sanction some countries are prevented to participate in the in the world forum of the uh, sports as well yeah, maybe in olympics or or maybe in the in the world cup they are restricted to participate in and sanction on environment since the declaration of united nation conference on human environment international and environmental protection efforts it can uh, some suppose some particular goods ma- getting manufactured in one country and that is affecting uh, the environment I- I- in a huge way so those particular product can be banned to uh, to, pen- uh, to go to the international market now target is fin- uh, if you are working in the ua or or if you are related to the the financial institute you can understand there is a term is very popular now that is targeted financial section the term targeted financial section means both asset freezing and the prohibition to prevent uh, to prevent the funds or other assets from being made available directly or indirectly what does it mean it, it in layman term i can i can tell you that if there is some fund available in your bank of any sanction national sanction individual or country you have to freeze the fund you cannot allow these people to use the fund anymore so this is the targeted financial sanction and directly or indirectly for the benefit of uh, <clears throat> it, can, it it should not be used to benefit of the designated person or the entities so if any person is related to russian sanction the fund cannot move through your system and according to the ua rule uh there is unsc rule uh, unsc list of the the sanctioned individuals united nation security council list and ue also uh, also has their own sanction list related to uh, terrorist and um, and related to other individuals or countries so you have to follow that rules money should not be uh, move or receive from those jurisdictions so whenever in our, our transaction these particular parties are involved we have to go ahead and inform the central bank so the what this uh, what the central bank or the regulator wants from us as a as a as a bank or or from a financial institution what they want they want us to understand our risk basis of our customer base so the risk based approach means the country state authorities and as well as the private sector should have understanding of the money laundering and terrorist financing risk to which they are exposed to and apply the measure uh, and in a manner to and to an extent which would ensure the mitigation of this risk uh, whenever we are facing our we have to first, so what does it mean we have to do our own risk assessment and up on up after doing the risk assessment we have to put the particular measure so uh, uh, then we can uh, so that we can stop these transactions or transactions or the fund movement to, uh, from happening 
so this is the risk based approach if our central bank or our regulators want us to understand our risk and um, like after assessing the my customer base the kind of business i'm handling maybe in our customer suppose we have 100 customer and 50 of the customers are from the uh maybe jewelry industry now the jewelry industry as the gold is involved and the other high i mean high value uh, metals are involved so the money can hidden into those uh, the value of the money can be can be hidden in terms of the jewelry or the gold bar and they can send it to the other country or jurisdiction uh, and that can be used for both money laundering and terrorist financing even for the prolification financing so if we have this kind of risk based i mean the the whenever uh, the industry where the risk is high related to money laundering and terrorist financing so we have to take the proper measure to handle those customer they are not saying us to not do not do not deal with these people that no, you can deal with but you have to put your proper measure and accordingly whenever you are finding some activity which can be lead, which can be uh, leading to any kind of, of money laundering or terrorist financing you have to report it to the central bank so the now of the us has as we have seen previously also this uh, ua government has whenever they has done that nra national risk assessment they found all this how the money laundering happening as the first column uh, first row you can see we already talked about it and now where this money is going to okay so this this can be understand like the banks which is the high uh, high risk uh, industry the banks money service businesses and dealers of precious metals metals and stone the second category is come the financial advisor then consultancy firm then investment lawyers notaries and other independent legal professional real estate companies as well as a company service provider they all come in the second category they are in the medium high risk zone and the medium risk who, who is having medium risk the auditors the custodians life insurance and the investment prop, property and the and the casualty and the general insurance so now this last if you see uh, see the this whole table the second row all these three category where we have mentioned the bank financial advisor auditors these three people are under in some kind of the regulators banks and money money service businesses are under central bank then dealers of precious businessmen uh, precious uh, metals has their own regulator in the same way all this profession real estate they also have their own own body who regulate them life insurance the in all the insurance activities and the share market related activities is handled by yeah, there is another regulator so everyone having their own rules and regulation and this has to be implemented in your company if you want to sustain in the business otherwise what they can do they can give sanction on you like the central bank what is the term of sanction it can be the financial penalty so as this is the punitive measures so they can give some uh, penalty or they can ask you to close some activity of your company if we, if we look at the money service business or the exchange houses suppose you have uh, three four activities you are changing money and you have your uh, beside the ch- beside changing of money you are uh, you sending money to someone else also uh, as a remittance services so they can ask you to stop the remittance business now you just go and do the money changes only so this kind of measures can they can take last year uh, if we look at the lawyers list they have in a way the the board this regulators have closed more than 250 lawyer from the there's some individual lawyer also and the firms also so these things measures uh, according to the risk uh, we are there the government is also taking responsibilities and and going for the closure of the company and, and putting the fine and they expect us as a financial a responsible financial institution to strength our uh, our mltf and uh, mltf uh, <coughs> to measure to mitigate our mltf risk they want to strengthen our procedure and the policy for that now for this ua we have laws here so the government every government having laws so ua have the major law they have changes the uh, laws in 2018 the law number and the decree we know as the uh, know the law as a decree law number 20 
and they have amended the law in 2021 again and they have uh, they have changed some part of this law and not only the law we regulators are really taking care of the of this uh, of this uh, situation and they are guiding and they are giving suggestions and, g- and giving training to every time at least more more uh, more than 20 uh, 20 times they're, they're having online webinars and they're giving training to them training to all the all the financial institutions and this uh, and the others uh, this dna bps and the 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 real estate or the insurance people so they have another stage called the executive resolution what does it do how to implement this law and what are the requirements in um, uh, what is the requirement you have to follow to implement this law in your institute they have an they have a cabinet decision on it as known as 1029 and same they have amended that that one in the, the as a resolution number 24 in 2022 only and beside this they have the multiple uh, decisions they whenever they're founding uh, any small uh, the leak is there any so, small gap is there they are providing an admin they are providing the administrative penalties and they have unified the violation of the uh, violation and the administrative fines is there and beside this they are having some cabinet decision this 58 is important because the first two we are talking about there's a penalties and the and the <clears throat> and the violation and the said violation measures again for the pen they are talking about the penalties and then the, the third one this is they they are saying that every company need to have their beneficial owner list if you are a company your bene- who are the beneficial owner of your company and the customer you are dealing with you must keep a register for that and by the cabinet resolution 74 2020 what does it say it like you have to implement the <clears throat> the you have to implement the united nations united uh, nations security council list and ua list at least to screen the to screen, uh, to check is there any party involved in those in this list who is doing business with you or not now as uh, mr sam already told that uh, there we have to understand to do all this thing we need a proper training and we need to we need to understand how to do all this difficult task so, so thank you very much yeah yeah uh, just one minute thank you very much uh, your uh, so with uh, Mr. Farma, that about such a nice, you know, uh, discussion about everything. And definitely, you know, as I was telling you, I was requesting you that come for the webinar and please explain us that, you know, how, mm. what is anti-money laundering, how it can impact, what is the importance of the anti-money laundering and what are the different terms of anti-money laundering, right? Mm. Right. Uh, just one minute, one student mm. has asked one question. Yeah, uh, please. Layering, like Mr. Vasim is asking one question that layering like circulation of the same amount? Uh, it can be the same amount or or the layering can happen, you know, they can mix the fund in between. Suppose from uh, there is uh, four uh, four individuals are there from uh, from uh, individual A and B is uh, uh, depositing money uh, to the to the fund of uh, to the account of uh, C and now the individual C, he is not moving the whole amount together. He is again sending a part of it as the first go. And then again, the half of this fund, they is waiting to another person to deposit money and they can send it to uh, send it again. So the money would be the amount would be involved in this, but it cannot be it can uh, it can be or cannot be moved in the same uh, in the same go. It can be part or in can be uh, uh, he can add his own share also and they can move again so it is like that the layering main main goal of the layering is we have to understand that they want to hide the origin that where the money has started his journey from the which account they just want to hide that they would be uh, sending uh, from one account to another account to another business to another business and they and at the end we will not able to understand the source great and mr uh 
Mr. Sarma, actually, mm-hmm. uh, as we know mm-hmm. that, you know, mm-hmm. we, we are going to start the new batch for camps. Yeah. Okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, we got so many, you know, uh, doubts about the camp, people asking mm-hmm. about that, you know, if you can mm-hmm. really explain us about the, in a shorter, that what is a camp and, you know, what are yeah. the uh, requirements for to pass, to take that qualification, you know, and how it's yeah. going to help them. Yeah, exactly exactly that's why i was coming there you know that uh, to 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 do all this we need we need training and uh, for the training i would say uh, i would say that this camps is a very popular course right now so from the uh, the camps is divided into total four you know the the total four chapter is there in the camp if you look at the camp studies study material there is total four chapter first chapter this they talk about all this process uh, and the and the procedure how the people do money laundering and uh, the what are the different terms used in the banking banking and in the financial institutions then there's another chapter what this uh, this world bodies are doing there like the, what FATP is doing there uh, what what is the role of UNODC in it and beside this uh, there is uh, FIU is involved there is a lot of government uh, and non-government and the intergovernmental body is there, which is dealing with this, uh, uh, which is uh, dealing in this. So they are also, uh, uh, they are also been discussed the rules and regulations and what EU's, uh, EU is, EU which may, uh, uh, European Union measures and everything is uh, decided in the, the chapter second. And then another chapter is there, what is the, what is the duty of a compliance officer or the compliance uh, the individual or the or the person who is dealing in the anti-money laundering what is their role to be played as a as you are in the institution and then comes the fourth chapter and how to handle uh, if already suppose uh, there is a already incident happen in your company or in your bank then how to handle the regulator and how to handle the you know this uh, law enforcement uh, suppose the police is coming and want to search your organization what you're supposed to do and what you're supposed not to because this camps there is many courses in related to money laundering but the camps you know g- give a full access to you know, to the to the knowledge the by which you can later on you can uh, do really uh, effectively implement the measure to stop this anti money loan uh, to uh, for, from the money launderer and uh, the terrorist financer you can stop it so this is one of the thing i would like to say and if the person is already camps qualified after that uh, you know the employability and the uh, demand for this particular staff is get get increased in the market because they already have the, the accord they they may have or may not have the necessary experience for this but they already acquired the knowledge for the camps and even if this is let uh, this can be you know the benefit to uh, for uh, for those people who are already working in the system uh, in the in the particular division of anti uh, I mean the financial crime anti financial crime or who is who want to start their career from there so Have this is care. this is how uh, the camp ca- camps can Mr. Mr. Sarma Mr. Khatul is asking that uh, yeah. he is already working as a, a KYC yeah. and AML analyst right okay. okay okay and as per is confirmed that you know uh, how camps can help him further in, in his career so okay. as far as my answer is confirmed that please correct me that you know uh, definitely camp is a global certified qualification in anti-money laundering aml yeah. right correct, correct and it is like attestation you know suppose for example there are so many uh popular qualifications for available in the in the market and definitely out of that cam is something which could be attested throughout the world and nobody is going to ask you any question because that's the you can say CAMP is one of the market leader in anti laundering qualification. Am I right, Mr. Exactly, uh, exactly. There is many, many, you know, many, uh, many different kind of uh, institutions are there, which is uh, providing the anti-money laundering training. But uh, anyway, the CAMPs is uh, the market leader without any question on that. Because there what is, happened in the yeah. in the AML, as Mr. Mm-hmm. Farmer was explaining that, you know, it will keep on. Uh, definitely, when you talk about AML, the, the, the basic... Uh, concept is same, same throughout the world but again the little bit rule will keep on varying from country to country okay so basically in the AML we need to know about the basic concept what it means and CAMP is a qualification which is applicable anywhere in the world based on that particular qualification you can grab any kind of any country's AML laws rules regulation for anything any operations 
So basically, there's a foundation course you can say about the. You know, exactly. It is. Yeah. Exactly. You can say that same thing. Like you know, there the, though there is a lot of uh, courses available. I have gone through personally to the, you know, those uh, syllabus and all. But uh, whatever I find interesting in this particular uh, in the camp subject, the camp, um, camp course, they are touching almost every necessary part of it. Exactly. Like if you are if you are already been camp certified, first of all, uh, you would be knowing whatever the products has been used throughout the world. and what who are the government governing board which is taking care of this uh, if if this evil like how they want us to act and uh, as a money as a, a compliance professional what is your uh, responsibility and as if you were you, you cannot even you know sometime we are not we are just want to start our life our business our uh, our j- journey in the career as a uh, as a anti financial crime expert so so what is your uh, i mean what is your responsibility in that case and if you are already a managerial position what is your responsibility as well they they you know give a proper explanation of that thank you and mr uh, mr sharma mr mm-hmm. atul mr ajay is asking asking that mm-hmm. what are the you know eligibility for the camp what they need to have minimum to fit mm-hmm. for the examination Yeah. See, the basic, you know, the camps is uh, is an open course. Anybody can join this. But uh, so far, I have seen uh, the if you are talking about the eligibility criteria, you need to have a bachelor. Uh, the people without bachelor can apply for the camps as well, but they need need a huge experience, like maybe at least twenty to thirty, year, like twenty plus years experience to to get eligible. and if you go to the camps you know a camps uh, site there is a eligibility criteria you can check your own eligibility but the basic eligibility few years of experience it can be in any sector not necessarily in the Great. finance or necessarily in the in the uh, in the anti money laundering uh, but you have if you have a you know bachelor degree then you can start your journey in the uh, as a fresher also you can start the journey So, Mr. Rakesh, I think we could able to answer your query, sir. Mr. Rakesh is working as a safety in the safety department, and he want mm-hmm. to start his ah. career as a AML. Okay, mm-hmm. so definitely, as Mr. Sharma has advised you that you can uh, uh, keep on, uh, de- you know, ke- keep on studying the uh, camps. Okay, and you can, if you want to upgrade your career or change your career in AML, and definitely, it is one of the most hot uh, and upcoming course in the world. Okay, because every country is now under the scanner. Okay, every country is following. Basically, if you can see that in the Middle East countries earlier, the money laundering was not that much, you know, required. But now it's it's required everywhere in the world. So you can start your career. I And think. you know the FATF, who, who is the the body FATF, they yeah. they you know give a proper. I mean, they, they classify the countries. And presently, the UAE is under you know the, they having different kind of list. So if the UAE is already under uh, the, the right now they are under the we, it, generally this known as uh, as a gray list of it yeah. like you had it has to take a lot of measures to to, to come out of it so they are the UAE as a govern uh, as a country they are really really very, you know too much uh, serious about it and they are giving too much Uh, focus on this particular sector so i think if the person is having camps and little bit of experience in financial market even if so they can they can really take a flight right, right now but if they are not from this particular industry or a fresher they can at least get at least the start their uh, i mean the career on this same same path and i think there's some some india from people from india has also joined here Yeah. So in India will be facing the FATF uh, I mean evolution very soon so I think there will be a more opening as well in India Okay great yeah. and uh, Mr Atul want to ask you question Mr Atul you can ask the question for no problem Yes please why not Yeah Yes Mr Atul please please go ahead I think Atul has some question Yeah I I cannot hear him. Can can yeah, I, Mr. Tatul, please ask the question. I think you had some doubt, right, Mr. Tatul? No. Okay. Mm, okay. No problem. No problem. So I it's mm. the website of a camp. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Mr. Sama, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah I can, can hear you. you. Yes, yeah. tell, tell me, tell me, tell me. Hello. Your voice is Am breaking though. Yeah, tell me, tell me now. Yeah, so I was saying like I mm. checked the 
start the camp course if you are not supposed yeah, yeah, to be a yeah. member immediately right because, because if you be a member you have to pay the money them immediately and be a member right okay so what you can do to to optimize your cost and membership and all that what you can do you can start your studying the camp course okay you can track training and whenever you feel that you are ready for the exam before that 15 20 days or one month back you can register your full of the camps and take the examination okay so there is oh, no, no that's, that's good mr that's good mr mm-hmm. congrats but my question here is Hmm. Uh, like uh, if i uh, if after an starting for the exam hmm i am preparing all the all the all the syllabus and everything not a points after you know road exam would be for me uh, uh, whether i do have those 40 points right I'm you a, see I'm the for, how, how much how much point you are having you you can get 20 points from the bachelor degree as only and then uh, and then from the from from, from yeah <laughs> and once you are once you are member of the camp society that at point at that point right uh, yeah that point of time you can have the 6 hour course from the camps as well they will give accord with that particular course also So I don't think that eligibility would be a problem if you are at least a, at least a bachelor and have a few years of experience in any field. You can you can contact Mr. Sam later on and then okay. we can uh, discuss Mr. about Okay, Mr. No problem. Uh, we can help you. You can join you can contact our team and they can definitely help you regarding this matter. Don't yes, worry about that. Yes. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, anytime, anytime. Yeah. I am there also. You can contact me through Mr. Sam. I would be helping you also. So that's not a big deal. Done. So uh thank you Mr Fubadeep I think you are getting late we have you know it it was nice to have you it's fine for the webinar okay and you have you have given your valuable time for the webinar and you have given the insight about the camp and and AML very nicely we understood that what exactly about the AML and all that even I was also not clear and to all the participants okay or if anybody want to expand their career in AML okay or camps we also have some other courses in the you know in your aml also so you can definitely get back to our team okay and our team will help you and definitely we are not only helping you from your course point of view definitely we will also guide you about the eligibility and all that so that is our team will keep on doing that anytime and if you if you have any kind of also questions later on the the, the question rise in their mind later on as well you can send the question to mr sam and uh, in the in delphi and uh, if he is clear he can answer you otherwise i will be making an answer and email you as well no problem on that yes, that is any time okay thank you very much for thank everyone you, for thank joining you. also yeah thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir thank you with that i will just end the webinar and thank you mr fubadeep again for mr sharma <laughs> for for much. supporting of the webinar thank you thank it was a w- excellent opportunity for me as well thank you goodbye to everybody thank you sir thank you all the participants thank you